could always watch a movie. This is true. All right, research for work. Okay. Okay, so we're back um, to my iPad. Um, the one I was in on my computer, like I was saying, um, this is Evernote. So this is the version for the iPad. If you don't have an iPad, you can also use Evernote um, on your computer. So some of these do have dual technology. Um, this one's great. Like I said, you can take a lot of different information and stick it all in one place. Um, once you install the app on your, either on your computer or on here, if you're browsing, you're on a web page, um, you can right click and just say whatever you're looking at, copy it over to Evernote and it'll automatically create a new note for you. Then you could put that information out there and start to edit. Um, you know, I, I threw out here just my notes for today. Um, and then just other things like, um, you know, like we were talking about clickers. I just copied the web page over there. I was out the other day and I found some really cool links for um, my marketing class and I wanted to remember them for next semester so I just grabbed a copy of them and put them out there. So it's a, for me it's just a great conglomerate. You can put notes out there, other information. Um, and I just recently started using it but so far I think it's pretty good. And the cool thing about it is it's all um, synced together. So if I'm working on my iPad and I do something and I come back and I want to work on my um, laptop, it's automatically updated or vice versa. So like I built my agenda. I was doing that um, last night on my iPad and now I've got it running on my PC and it's all updated and ready to go. So um, it's a cool thing. You can also access any of these documents you're creating from any computer anywhere. So um, you could go to any computer, go to their website and sign in with your account and password and access any of your information as well. So it's a kind of a neat thing just for um, conglomerating all kinds of cool information. Um, Okay, let's see. So on my agenda here, then I said um, Blackboard. Um, so you know we use Blackboard here at the college, and Blackboard just recently updated their app. And this is a really good one that I think a lot of students are starting to use. It goes in. Um, sometimes it makes you find, I must already have found it, but um, you can go and you can find the Wibbit Community College. Um, the login information is logging you right into our, um, our system. And so this comes up now with all my courses that I currently have out there and in Blackboard. Um, it's tough in the app to actually edit your own content and create new assignments and stuff. I still find it's easier to do that on a computer. But I think it's great if you just want to go out there and look at how the material looks and know what your students might be seeing and how your students might be accessing your material. So for example, if you just go into one of my classes, this is my Intro to Business class. It's got the similar page of information that I've put out there for them, you know, details on me, and they can kind of click in. If they want to see what it looks like, they can open that in a browser and it just continues to open up information. Um, and then it'll open up the way it would look on a web page. So if I go into my assignments, you can see all my different weeks of information that I've put out there. Um, and then the cool thing is you kind of open it up and it gives you a real quick, quick view of what they have to do. Um, and then again, if I, they want to look at the detail, they can open that in um, a browser. And it will open it up and then this is let me get a full page here. Kind of the detailed view of what they would get if they were looking um, online the same way. Um, and I think the good thing for people is not so much um, that all of our students have iPads, but the majority of our students have smartphones and this app works exactly the same on a smartphone. So even taking a quiz, um, this is my quiz for the week here. Um, it's my chapter 8 quiz. Oh, and I think I already showed Barry and I took this one, so I had to go down a week. I'm on my chapter 7 quiz here. Um, so here's my quiz and it says, you know, you have one attempt to take this quiz, you go in, you cut the cord, and um, it's going to open up and it's going to start giving you the quiz information right away. Students are taking this and using their phones, using their iPads to take, the, take these assignments. So um, real accessible and understanding, right, of how it looks that, and how they complete it. So they can just go through here and continue. Well, through hopefully spend a little bit more time than me here, a little bit more right. Page through. And then it says, wait, check your work, do you want to submit? And they have to sign to say they've done it. They put their initials there and then they would submit their test. 
And then the cool thing for me is I actually get a note saying, hey, a student's taken the test, um, and I can go out there and then look at it. So kind of um, just good to know that this stuff is out there. Um, the other good thing to know is that um, if you're putting stuff out there, the best way to view this, and Mary and I were looking at this the other day, is um, PDFs are really good to think about putting your material out as PDFs because they're really easy and accessible in a lot of this technology. So for example, like in my accounting class, um, I'll give them solutions after we've completed an assignment. And so I put these out as PDFs versus Word documents. Um, and now they come up here, and then the other thing that's neat is if they are um, working on an iPad, they can like open it in the, the book tool, which then makes a full page and they can navigate through. It'll just take a minute to download that over into this application. And so now if I click on here, I've got my homework that I can then page through and find those problems that were given to them. So answers to the questions. It's a little small, but a little And of course, the cool thing with an iPad, if you're not familiar, I mean, you can kind of expand and contract by just put pinching and squeezing your fingers to, to get bigger and to get smaller. Okay. Um, the other one that I found is really fun, and I actually got this one from John, um, is he calls it Teacher Pell. It's been updated to call, be called Teacher Kit. I use this in my classrooms on campus. Um, and what I did is the very first week of classes, I made all my students come in and I made them take their own picture. Um, John told me that the students won't take pictures, so I made them do it themselves, so we passed the iPad around. So this is my introduction to business class. These are all my students. You can make this bigger or smaller. Um, and the cool thing is, is now I've got information on my students. Um, some of them didn't put stuff in here. Um, but I've got contact information for those that wanted to provide it to me. Um, the really cool thing, though, is for me, is I have an attendance module here. And so when I go to class, um, when I learn their names really fast, because I had pictures of who they were. And then what I can do is say, if we had class today, um, I'd be going in the classroom, I just tap on who's here. If you're not here, I double tap and it tells me you're absent. Um, and then you can see some of these have cumulative numbers here. This tells me how many cumulative absences my students have already had at any, any given time. So it makes it really easy when they come in to see me and say, you know, have I missed any class? Yeah, you've missed three times. And then I can go back to the calendar and find what they've missed if I wanted to. Um, this also has a grade book on it. So I have started using the grade book a little bit. Um, I've used it most. I don't use it to like calculate grades, but in this class in particular, we do a lot of in-class activities, and I moved away from giving them grade points for showing up or for attendance. So now I give them um, grade po graded points for if they show up and they participate in in-class activities. And so what I do is instead of making them all write their name on a piece of paper and turn it in and giving them full points, while they're working on their in-class activities, I add a, a assignment in the grade book and then anyone who's there that day gets their full points. So, so if you're there and you're participating, you earn full points on these. And if you don't, I put in a zero that you've missed and you've lost those points. Um, so it's a really active, easy way that's reduced my paper load for, from grading. Um, you can also um, organize the class. You can move around the chairs and make it look like where your students are sitting. You could add behavioral notes or other sorts of notes in this app as well. So it's kind of a really neat thing. Um, and I've used it for my on-campus classes so far, so it's, I think it's a pretty good one. Okay, the next one um, that I wanted to show you, which this one's really good for math and science in particular, it's called Wolfgram Alpha. Have you heard of this? It's got like anything and everything in it. Um, so, you know, it asks you, well, what do you want to know about? Um, and if you're not sure, it's got all these categories that you could pick from. Um, and the cool thing is it's more than just going out and Googling something because it kind of compiles the information and gives you something in a more organized format or table. Um, so for example, in my, one of my classes we were talking about the stock market and investing. <coughs> and one of the things that we had talked about, um, if I go back here, let me put it in money and finances, we were looking at with just the release of the mini, we were talking about, well, what stock should we invest in? And so we said, well, let's look at Microsoft, Apple, and Google. So all I did at the top there is I typed Microsoft, Microsoft's ticker symbol, Apple's, and Google's. 
And now it all of a sudden gave me all this really cool information about it. So where their trading prices are, comparison side by side in terms of financial information, how much money, how many employees, um, what their stock price is, how many shares, what their returns have been providing. It'll even chart and show you what the stocks have been doing over a recent time. All kinds of information. It's really cool. And um, for the math people, you can like type in a math equation and hit search and it'll solve it for you. I don't know if you want to tell your students about that one, but um, all kinds of cool information. I mean, there's other stuff in here. And what did I put in my notes? Um, you could like look up, like say you don't know a category, you just want to find something out. So like say we want to learn about the growth of China's population. So it, can, it goes through and it kind of, give it a minute, it'll come up and say, you know, here's the history. Um, it's got 1.35 billion people, it's first, um, the density, growth, expectancy, and then you could change that or you could add, maybe I want to compare that with GDP or something. Depends on what your class is, but I mean, like you said, if you look at the category of what they have out here, it's, it's pretty much endless. Um, I mean, nutrition was cool, like, you know, say you want to eat healthy and you want to know what you're eating and what is it's... Is that a spike in their growth? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A huge... Huge spike, yeah. Now, also say you know you had some Swiss cheese for lunch, and you want to know how bad it is for you, you can type that in. <laughs> Um, it'll come up with the nutritional information, how much calcium, da 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 da, da you name it. Um, uh, it's amazing all kinds of stuff that's in here, you name it, the, this app has a lot of different stuff. Um, but in particular, like math and sciences stuff and congregating data is really cool. Um, the other one that I was going to show you, which is just a personal productivity one, um, is this one. It's called Find My iPhone. Um, Unfortunately, it didn't work for me really well this morning because I lose. I have an iPhone too, and I lose my iPhone all the time. Not because I'm, I'm personally irresponsible. My kids love my iPhone, so they take it and walk away with it, and I don't know where they left it. So what I started to, I used to just call on the phone, call my iPhone, and it would ring. Um, but then it would go to voicemail after a couple rings, and I hadn't been able to get to every room. So I downloaded this app, which you could go in, um, and it'll GPS find your iPhone. And then what you can do is you can hit to have it um, ring your iPhone. And so it'll keep ringing it until you find your iPhone. And it's worked fabulous for me until this morning when my iPhone's dead somewhere in my house that my son left last night. So um, it was last located yesterday at 5 o'clock at my house. So you can see that. And I can't play the sound because it's dead. So if they could fix that, I'd really like this app. But um, that's a really good one. Um, another one that's out here that I think is pretty cool is um, it's a dictation tool, which I know dictation type tools have been around for forever, but this one's, um, what I like about it is pretty accurate um, versus, like I've used Siri or other tools where you say something and it doesn't quite read what you want to, or type what you want to say. Um, but this one I found pretty accurate, so I'm going to just back up here off of my wish I paid. But maybe you have, um, so you tap and recording to-do list. Next line, give a presentation, next line. And what I just said um, was pretty accurate, okay? And so um, it claims to, to be able to capture quicker than you could type. And certainly, maybe if you're on a traditional computer, you could probably type faster um, than you could talk, but on this, when you have to type, it's actually pretty accurate um, to capture what you have to say. So. Occasionally I'll use that one, and then once you do something, you could like copy it, you could Facebook it, Twitter it, you name it. Um, most of the time I just copy it and paste it into what I want to use it for. What was that one called? Dragon, Dragon Dictation. That's this green one down here. Okay. Um, and I can send you these names and these notes afterwards if you want to go back. Um, one thing that my students have asked me about is what other tools can they use in the classroom. So I'm actually planning to give a similar presentation to my students on ways they could use tablet technology. And one of the ones um, that I read about on a really cool research, uh, website that I'll show, share with you, it's um, freetechnologyforteachers.com, if you've never been there, um, is this in-class app. 
which is supposed to um, be really cool to allow students to bring a tablet to class and they can create notes, they can take pictures, they can record voice and lecture um, and have it all stored in one place based on the subject so they can create a class for biology or whatever class they're taking and then pick a specific day, have what you might have talked about in class, maybe take a picture of a PowerPoint or a chart or a math problem or whatever it is on the screen and then put their own notes beside it. Um, so you know you just um, I haven't used it, but I just downloaded it again for them. But you know, you select a course. So I was just playing. I said business law, and then you can go in here and you could start typing. Um, you know, maybe we're talking about contract law, and I want to record what we're talking about. I can hit that button. It's, every time I record, it can't do both things. But on my screen, it comes up and it's recording what I say here. And as soon as I'm done, then it would um, embed that mic audio document into this note as well as if I wanted to take a picture, there's a picture mode here, you see it comes up. Um, I can flip that around here if I wanted to take a picture of you guys. And then I could add that to my note. So it's kind of a cool thing to be able for students to comp compile everything at the same time. <coughs> okay. Okay. So that was that in class one at the bottom there. Um, most of you probably don't care, but there's a cool um, app I found. It's an economics app that um, I've used both when I taught macroeconomics last semester. Um, also, um, if I, I teach international business next semester and we talk, start talking about the economy. Um, it calculates and basically what you have to do is manage the economy for a handful of years and your goal is to keep your inflation rate 2% um, and stable, you're looking at the interest rate and you have to decide what interest rate you want to set and so there's like four quarters in a year and so what I did with my students is I passed this around the room and each student had to make a decision for each quarter and then every time you make a decision like say you move the interest rate and say okay then it's going to show what happens to your indicators and you've got a team of advisors that you know tell you either you've done good or you've done bad. You've got news that happens based on all your decisions and it updates and then they have like these um, events that happen like maybe you have a problem in the Middle East and gas prices are going through the roof or something. Realistic um, things that might happen in the economy and the students have to try to realize just the difficultness of trying to manage the economy and set the interest rate. So it's kind of cool. My students liked it. Um, Anyway, um, newsstand, so for any of you that do have any type of tablet, I wanted to point out that if you do already subscribe to magazines at home in a paper form, most of them you have um, the ability to get for free on your iPad as well. So we already get um, Time Magazine, and so I already have this open, but this is the latest edition of Time. Um, and you can go through here and look at the, the magazine online. Um, and the cool thing is too that sometimes they add in bonus digital content of videos and stuff. Um, so this is just the latest Time Magazine. But as it, you go through here and if there's an article you want to read, occasionally you'll get extra bonus content for it being a digital version as well. And it's completely free if you've already subscribed to the magazine. So if you've got a tablet or if you know someone else who doesn't who gets a magazine subscription and you do, you put their information in and you just need the barcode off of your your magazine that comes in the mail and you can get those for free. And if you don't get them, you can still buy them. You can either buy a subscription to any magazine you want online or you can buy a specific issue too. I mean, they're not that expensive. Let's see, TED's Talks. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of TED's. But TED is um, a, a great <coughs> video site in terms of lots of um, inspirational type speeches. So you can go out there and find and search to talk about lots of different things. And some of them are short, some of them are 20, 30 minutes, some of them could be an hour. But um, you could go in and pick what you thought might be relevant to the type of class you're talking about or the subject. Um, and again, you can search if you're searching for something specific. Um, you could just kind of click the inspire me, I want to find something that's courageous. Um, and I have 20 minutes in class and it'll kind of 
um, or that brings up this is the recommendation that based on those criteria you have. So it's again a great place to get resources and video content um, into the classroom. iTunes U, um, I downloaded. This is um, a great place to look at their catalog. Um, they have tons of free content already out there in lots of different subjects. So I um, already downloaded some. But if you go into the catalog, they have all kinds of stuff for free that you can download. So um, you, know, you can go into the university and college here um, if you want to look specifically you know like a specific college has put stuff out there that you think is important um, they're putting I mean all kinds of stuff out here you name the subject these are all free um, and um, you know I believe that if someone's put out some really good stuff you, you know why not steal liberally and pick and choose what makes sense to add into your class so what I did is I already went back um, in mine and I downloaded open classes relevant to what I'm teaching, so things on financial markets, entrepreneurship, um, I have a law class out there. And then um, when I go out there, let me see where I was, so I was in the law one the last time here, um, and you can go and they outline what they talk about in the class, and then um, you can go out there and you can get their lecture information, they've got embedded essay, uh, or videos, <coughs> all kinds of different recommended readings, um, they'll talk to you, and you can play all this stuff right in your class if there's something that's really relevant or difficult or you want it to, to look at what somebody else is covering on a specific subject, subject matter. You know, so for example, I'm starting contract law in my law class next week, um, I've got all this different stuff, um, some of them have some really good examples or some really ec great extra stuff that I can bring in right into the classroom, um, and it's all free and it's out there. Okay. Let's see. Um, and then the other thing that's out there similar to this is podcasts. So um, basically just like video, but they're just uh, speaking only. So you can go out there, you can search the catalog of podcasts for whatever subject you might want to play on. So for example, I downloaded this one, I'm sorry, an entrepreneurship club on campus. And so I, uh, I downloaded this one and it has um, all these different talks of, you know, anywhere from 10 to 40 minutes talking about these different entrepreneurs. Um, talking about a different content. If you wanted to listen to one of them, you could just click on it and it should start playing here. Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 23. So, you know, if you wanted Welcome something like this to, to go in the class, um, this doesn't have the video associated with it, but sometimes that's okay too um, and worthwhile. And then there's other places you can go just the same to find video ones as well. Okay, um, I told you about um, that free technology for teachers website. I just wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to go back into my Evernote here because um, I grabbed the link. So this is um, the website. Let me get up. I just click on here. Um, so again, it's got all kinds of great information um, out here, and what I use it for actually is they always have recommendations on new apps. So I'll go out there and there's this guy who runs this website, has a blog, and you can search through all his historical stuff, and they always recommend like new latest apps, and so you can go just get ideas of new stuff or look for your specific sub subject matter. Um, and even it, it has other technology, not just tablet type technology out there. So it's a really good website. I found lots of good stuff out there. Um, just different apps for education, um, what you might like to look at. It's all, and it's got articles and tells you about it a little bit versus you just hunting and pecking. So um, again, it's a pretty cool website and I would recommend you, you check it out. In fact, I just grabbed this book, spelling, vocabulary spelling city. My daughter uses the spelling city um, for at school. She got a note home to say she's in first grade to start using spelling city. Well, now they have an app. So I downloaded the app for here. And so we went in and I found her teacher, um, her school, and her teacher put out spelling lists. So now she can practice games with those spelling words right on an app. So I found that through here, which I thought was kind of cool. 
And that website um, is freeteach4teachers.com. So F R E E, I'm sorry, free tech. Free tech for teachers. So F R E E T E C H for teachers.com. Um, and then the other stuff I had out here, I mean, the one thing, I don't know how familiar you are with the apps, but um, I started to get a ton. So one of the things I started to do is start to organize them into categories. So like, I yeah, started so to, how do you do that? How do I do that? It's really easy, actually. Um, you just like, let's say that, you know, I've got some world geography ones out here. Um, by the way, my kids love these. They love the Stack the States game. I have a five-year-old who knows all the states now and where they go on the map from this game. And so now we've moved on to teach him Stack the Countries because he wants to do, I kid you not. Um, so let's say I want to put those all in the same place. I just hold it down and you can see how they all started shaking. Now I just want to drag one on, maybe if it doesn't want to move, on top of each other there. And now it's created one and I can call it whatever I want. So I could say this one is geography. Does it work similar on phones? It's exactly the same, same on a thing. phone. It's exactly the same. And then when I'm done and I don't want it to shake anymore, you just hit the button and it goes back. Okay. The other cool tip, um, kind of along those lines, if you do have a phone or if you have an iPad, um, the way Apple technology works is nothing really closes. It just They all just kind of stay open. So if you double click on your screen here, this brings up all my open apps. And sometimes when you have so much open, it starts to bog down the system. So if you hold your finger over one, you can see they all just came up now and they have these little red lines. If I just start closing them, I'm not deleting anything. I'm just closing the app from running on my system here. And I periodically go in and close these down. It tends to improve the performance of your your tablet, and I find it a lot on my phone too. So if you have an iPhone, it's a really good trick if you're not doing that to close your apps out. And then to get back, you just hit it again and it goes back to the regular place. Um, other apps that I like to use, these are more personal and fun, but if you have any redecorating project at all, this is a really cool website or app. It's called H O U Z Z House, and it's got like beyond, it's got like, I forgot, something like 700,000 pictures on here. No, it's showing me just that one. It's like huh, that's interesting. Maybe it's completely different. But anyway, it's a website like this and you can go in and you can search any room you might be trying to decorate, any idea, any color scheme, any anything, and it's got all kinds of cool stuff. And the neat thing is you can create your own personal scrapbook of anything you like. You can say save it to my idea book and you can go back to it. So if you're redecorating a room or you want to do something, it's kind of a really cool um, app. So I like that one a lot. Um, and kind of along those lines, um, are you guys using Pinterest at all? I just started using That one's really cool too. Kind of along the same lines is you can create a, an account here and you can go in and you can like tag anything you want. Um, so you can go search all kinds of stuff that's out there. Um, that's actually how I found House is I was out on Pinterest and I really liked this picture and it was posted on House. Um, and so that's how I found the app. Um, so again, it just is a great place to tag things that you might want to come back to and look at in a later time. And you can pretty much pin it at anything. Um, once you get out there, you can pin it, you can post it to Facebook if you want to share it with people, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, and it's not just for personal, I mean, there's great stuff personally, like you can find recipes and ideas and you name it. But then there's also really useful stuff in terms of there's a whole education section that you might be able to search and look at different um, ideas for the subject matter you're teaching and you might want to pin an idea and come back to it when you get to that type of material as well. Um, Facebook, um, Twitter, I don't know if you guys, anyone use Twitter in here? I'm not a big Twitter person, I mean I'm not like out there posting stuff to it, but what I've done is I subscribe to a bunch of feeds and so sometimes it's really good to get the latest news out here, a lot of mine are news related. And so what Twitter does is it just posts these short um, blurbs from whatever you're following to give you uh, information on whatever it is you care about. And there's millions of things and people to follow from the entertainment industry to politics to um, cooking or whatever your interests lie. Um, you can go out there and you can discover pretty much anything you want in terms of what's going out there or connect with and who's following you. And like I said, I don't really post a lot. I don't do much with it. but. Um, I occasionally look, like to see 
those latest kind of trending tags and stuff. Um, and then my kids, I mean, my kids use this a lot. There's a lot of great technology out there. If you do have um, younger kids and students, I mean, just in terms of the education stuff out there, I already talked about the stack of states. I mean, they use a lot of other things. I think it's talked about that spelling city. Teach Me Kindergarten teaches them math, spelling, pronunciation. Um, there's a um, Teach Me First Grade one that I have on my iPhone. You name it. Then we've got the whole, you know, non non-educational type games that they also play there too. Um, the real reason they, the like, real the reason they like the iPhone. <laughs> I mean the other thing too, you know, I mean you also have the ability to load your own video out there. So if you want to put on your own content, you can put um, different video, different music. It's kind of an all-in-one type thing. I don't know if you guys have any questions. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. I do want to see if I can get these things to work. I'm kind of really disappointed that on the Blackboard, you had said that PDF files are the best. Are the best. Yeah. About like uh, like ExamView, so software. Really yeah. Cool. So I don't use ExamView in Blackboard because I usually write my tests in Blackboard. Um, so how are, are you using ExamView and creating like a link, a web link right now? Oh, I was just wondering if you could, I had heard that it was supported by some things. Yeah. I mean, the way I use, I mean, I use ExamView to write my exams, and then I usually when I do that, I print them out and give them in class. Um, I just have my test banks uploaded into Blackboard, and then I build my tests right in Blackboard. Because okay. then, especially if you're doing like multiple choice type questions, they'll automatically score for you that way. Um, but PDFs tend to, to work the best, just from a viewing standpoint. Do you uh, write, if you write your um, material in PDFs, or do you convert them? I convert them. Yeah. And then you can convert them back. Yeah, I mean, normally what I do is I save everything in Word or PowerPoint. Whatever I'm working in, I have two versions. I write PDF, it in Word that's, that's and write it in PowerPoint, and then I just save it off into PDF format. When I post, normally I just post PDF for the students because they don't need to edit it, right. and then I know that they'll be able to, do, to see it. And for a lot of students, too, I didn't used to do that, and then I would get a lot of questions saying, I can't read PowerPoint. How do I read PowerPoint? And so it's like a really simple fix to say save it as a PDF, um, and it works really good. Um, I'm going to try this one more time here. I'm really disappointed that uh, I think this stuff works. I've got my, this is the one I gave to my business law class yesterday that seems to be working just fine. So let me see if I can switch over to the other one. So you hit the silver button to turn it on, and then you're going to hit one through five in this case, and the silver button is to enter. So I can see we've got six people responding up there. And there's nine of us in the room, so. I think it's kind of boring. Real so like, okay, I'm on Every time I hit it, it says channel change. My two. Oh, yes, you guys got to get out of the channel here. Let me help you, because we were messing around here. with them. This one. Go back here. Okay, now try to answer. Okay. Anyone else on cha find channel? Got it. Hit sort of two, but then we'll and then you hit enter, so you've already submitted. You're good. Oh. Hit, the, hit the silver button in the middle of the enter. Did you guys get a button? Yeah. You were? Okay. Mine says find channels, so do I hit the, the back button? Hit this back button over on here. The left side. The left side. And now you can go ahead and hit a number and then the silver button to enter. And it won't let them answer. There we go. Anymore. It shouldn't let them answer more than once, and you can set whatever you want. Okay, so now we've got our 10 responses, and I just want to close this off, and I want to say, 
Okay, so we can see the split here. So it looks like 30% of us have iPhones, 40% um, have droids, nobody has a Blackberry, no surprise. 10% is something else, and 20% of us are stuck in the 90s. Great. Um, you can see how this is really cool and really instantaneous. So, you know, for the 80% of us in the room, a lot of what I showed you could be using on your phone as well. Um, do you use an e-reader? If you use more than one, pick the one you use the most. Yeah. Well, we can't hook both things up at once, Barry, so. Um, okay. So 60% of us still like the books the old-fashioned way. I, I built the slides different because there's lots of different choices, more just to show you all the different options of what you can do. I didn't spend a lot of time on these. You can make these as fancy of slides as you want. You can also say you're already using a PowerPoint presentation. You could add these in if you wanted to. Um, do you use a tablet? So 70% of us don't have a tablet yet, 30% of us that do. Um, so here, um, we just on Tuesday or Wednesday, this week we can now have a new iPad mini that came out. So my question is, mo what's the most you would be willing to pay for the new iPad mini? And there's um, the CEO that took over for Steve Jobs, and I don't know if you know what the price is out on the market, but what would you be willing to pay for it? Curious to hear your, your input here. I, I did this with my students too. We talked about it in class. So, what is the mini size compared to the one? The mini size is about the size of like a kind, sort of Kindle Fire. You can see it's more the size of a, like a book, okay. more of like a Kindle or a Kindle Fire type size. Although they tout that their screen is a little bit bigger. Than Do you a know Kindle. what the difference of capability is on the mini? The mini, in terms of capability, is almost identical to the capability that I have on this one. This is the. Um, there is, there's a couple different versions of iPad out there. There's the iPad Retina. That's the HD Retina display. It's the latest and greatest. That one retails at the lowest amount of memory for $499. Um, so this version, which is the version before, which is still being sold, um, retails for $399. Um, and then now the iPad Mini is new. It's supposed to weigh less than a pound. It's about as thin as a, or thinner than a pencil. It's um, smaller than the iPhone 5 in terms of thickness. It's obviously bigger, but um, thin, thin light. So did everyone respond here? Okay, so, um, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Um, actually, do you know the price it came out to market it's with? It's three twenty nine. It's three twenty nine, which I, it, you know, that was the consensus in my class that it's too high. Um, the Kindle Fire, just as comparison, the Kindle Fire is one ninety nine um, and does similar stuff to an iPad. The thing that uh, Apple, in my opinion, that they have going for them is that it, anyone who has an iPod or has any music loaded in iTunes. It's portable to these tablets, so I can access all of my music that I've already gotten locked in with Apple on. Um, so that makes me more likely to buy an Apple product than somebody else. But if you've already gone a different way and you don't have your music tied into Apple, some of these other tablets are a better deal. Um, but it's currently out there at 329 and I'll be interested to see if that price sticks. Um, they said that Amazon is at 199 and some of the other um, comparable smaller size tablets are more in the... 250 range, I believe. So you can get other options. You can actually get a laptop now from Google, the Chrome that's out of it for 250 as well. So any word on what they're going to sell that new Windows one for? I've not heard, but that comes out this week too. Yeah. So a um, lot of convergence in this anyway. Um, here's a good one. Do you think using a tablet would help you improve at work? I'll be sure to share this with <laughs> senior management. <laughs> Um, so 80% of us think it would help them be more efficient at work. Um, do you think the college should provide each of you with an iPad to do your job better? <laughs> I'm sure they're going to listen to everything I have to say. 
probably the same 80%, right? Um, you can kind of see how this works. I'm glad we got to put this together. Um, honestly, the students get giddy when we use these. It's kind of like they get a fun toy to play with. Well, they like they like this they stuff, like yeah. That. And you can actually, like I said, these are really easy to use. There's a lot of technology built in. You can like assign numbers to all these and give a specific student one. So you could actually track who's responding right or wrong to questions if you wanted to. Um, you can actually allow them to type and put more essay questions in. There's all kinds of capabilities. It's just how much time you want to spend building in the, the content. Um, all right, feedback for me. How useful was today's session? One, extremely. Two, interesting. Three, good snacks. I was great, but I don't know. Very <laughs> smart. Good, 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 good. I guess that's good. Um, you can, like I said, you can use this for anything. So in my unofficial poll coming out, who are you going to vote for? Unofficial as it is. Um, this is really easy to do. Um, like I said, just to show you how to create this, um, you need to download the software, um, and then once you have the software, this extra tool bar comes up in PowerPoint. You just launch the Turning Point software, um, and then you just can go through here and insert a slide. You can pick whatever kind you want, right, in terms of charting. Like I said, you can do yes, no. Um, you can have essay type stuff. It's, yeah, here's an essay one. There's all kinds you can put in here. Um, I'm just going to do, so say I wanted to add another slide. Um, uh, Are you in your regular PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. And it, so this technology automatically connects to your PowerPoint? It's another. Just a plug-in. It's just it's a, a plug-in, plug -in. yeah. So, so here I just built a new question for you all. <laughs> <laughs> Now, in all fairness, was everybody at? I don't know. I don't know. We won't yeah, see the other one. <laughs> I'm just assuming it was better. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, I can show you actually. Um, I just have 100%. Um, <laughs> I didn't show you. Um, I just have this turning point application. So when I want to actually use it, I just go in and launch that, and it opens up that extra added right into PowerPoint. And PowerPoint is exactly the same. So you just launch that software that's that added. And then when you're in PowerPoint, do you open the added or, or what do you do? Well, you if, if you open and develop the slides, it'll, 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 it'll save, save that add-in as associated with the file and it'll automatically open it and have the add-in in there. So, so should we? Just open it was 100%. <laughs> you, just See? You, just open, uh -oh. you just open PowerPoint, right? I just think that we should put the caveat that some people didn't see both. Yeah. So I'm I didn't know. You can edit that off, off right? <laughs> I didn't know. So, um, so anyway. So did you just open PowerPoint and then? Yeah. So let me just close it out all together here. It also integrates with Excel too, no? I believe it does, yeah. Um, I think yeah. you can use it with Excel as well. So I just go in here and say I want to, I'm going to close PowerPoint all together. And Derek, are you saying the nursing program ones, the nursing department ones, it's not this Turing Point, it's a different software? No, it's the same it's company. The same software? It's, okay. it's these clickers without, different without the LCD. Okay. It's more of a yes no type system. Okay. Okay. So, um, so now I'm out of PowerPoint completely. Mm -hmm. And so I just go over here and I just double click on my software that you can download right from the Turning Point website, okay? Um, and it will open up PowerPoint and it opens up PowerPoint with this add-in, okay? okay and then when I go out to like say open a file here, like my faculty development slides, because I built Turning Point technology in here, it's going to automatically open that up to be able to receive my responses. Okay. So you don't have to have the clickers and this to build the stuff. You could go get the software for free and build it, but if you want to use it in the classroom, this is the receiver and all the little modules, obviously, you need that part of it to be able to um, collect the data from the students.
But I, like I said, I do it a lot for review questions and it works really well. And, and then you can actually save the responses too and so you can go back when you're developing your test if the, everyone got it wrong and then you spent 10 extra minutes covering that subject, then I usually test them on it. Well, yeah. <laughs> so you can save their responses to know everyone got this wrong and they spent 10 extra minutes and I'm going to look at what question I asked them and just modify it and see if they figured it out now. So it's really good instant feedback for you to know what your students are or aren't getting. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Hey, Beth, if you had a ways or things that you could kind of integrate if you had it where you had like a bunch of iPads available. I would love to have iPads for my class because one of the challenges with an iPad, I think, is it's more of an individual tool than it is a classroom tool. Yeah. I actually, one of the things I use my iPad for more than projecting is I actually will put it in my hands of my students. Like I'll give them in class work, then I'll go around and say, here, you can use this to add to it. I want you to do some extra research on this. And actually, it's amazing how many students have never touched the technology. And they're like, what, what do I do? How do I use this? Um, I told Ken, it would be awesome, like in my classrooms of 20, if I had five iPads, so each team got an iPad every time. It would work way better. Because I'd like to do it for dissection, and I have the program and everything, and it comes yeah. up there, but it's yeah, no different necessarily than putting it on my laptop and going through. Exactly. What would be cooler is to have Them doing a it. couple more in the class that and have more to do touching. Just, and yeah. Exactly. I feel exactly the that same That seems way. more, you know, I feel exactly for the, the technology. Way. It's a yeah. better individual yeah. tool. Right. You know, I mean, like, all of the kindergarten classes now in the ISD have iPads, and the students all get one. That's what they're meant, they're meant for, is for the, the, the learner to have it. Because like, so even in some of the stuff that Ken sent us, that video, yeah. they showed, like, the nursing programs where they all carried it around, and they had all the tests and stuff yeah. on it. And exactly. I mean, that's the cool that's way to go. That's exactly I mean, the cool way to go.